Oh, it's falling apart. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. The more spice, the better. And I just went everywhere. <laughs> Sweet, love that for me. Foodie, foodie, foodie foods, foodie fob fob foodies. Deliciousness, I'm a master rapper, you know? I never thought working at Taco Bell would be so incredibly helpful at this moment. <laughs> going? It's another week. What are we doing this week? We're making some sushi burgers. I'm Dr. Faith. I'm your faithful doc. Why are we making sushi burgers? I don't freaking know. Sounds good to me. So sushi burgers, have you ever heard of them? Because like I haven't ever tried them, but I do tell you one thing. I am gluten free, so therefore I can't have regular burgers and I love sushi. And I saw that there was this trend going around where people are making burgers and sushi combos. And I debated. If I wanted to make a sushi burger made out of sushi toppings, or if I wanted to make a burger in a sushi format. So we're doing the latter today. We're gonna take basically rice and substitute it for our buns, and we're gonna build a monstrosity that is so delicious that you're gonna wanna make it at home. So let's get started, shall we? What are you gonna need? Good question. Sushi rice, duh. That would be the first thing you'd wanna get. Probably gonna take the longest. I actually already prepared it. I'm a huge fan of pre-seasoning, so putting those seasonings on while you're cooking it up, uh, that are for less work in the end, and it comes out tasting amazing. So the way that I normally do it is I put one to two cups of sushi rice in a pressure cooker after I wash it and substitute out about a half cup of the water with a rice wine vinegar and add a couple tablespoons of sugar. Throw it in the pressure cooker for about 12 minutes on low pressure and then let it naturally release for 10 and you have amazing sushi rice. So I did that a couple days ago. So I'm kind of spitballing here. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna play around with some ingredients. Particular ingredients that I'm going to use is going to be obviously the rice that I talked about before, and then we're going to be using ground chicken that I pre-seasoned, as well as some microgreens, jalapenos, some refrigerator pickles, and then some special sauce, pickled ginger. I mean, we'll see what, how it goes, but that's kind of the general idea. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chop up some vegetables. If you don't like spice, don't use jalapenos. I feel like that, you just gotta say that out loud. I love fresh jalapenos, so we're gonna be chopping up some fresh jalapenos and then using that refrigerator pickles. Here's the thing, I do love sushi. I can't have garlic and I can't have onions because hashtag low FODMAP still. So I have to make this like I can have it. You might be wondering what the hell this is. Good question. It's my window seal green onion. So I started growing things at the beginning of quarantine because I really just didn't want to buy more, to be honest. And I heard you can just grow these in your window seal. So it's doing well. So basically just put it in some water and you watch it grow back. So we're gonna use a little bit of this in our burger today and I'm gonna cut some of this up. All right guys, we first started by cutting up all the vegetables. I cut up some thin slices of jalapenos. I also julienned some cucumber. We're gonna make a little side pseudomono salad. And the rest of our ingredients was pretty much already cut up. So let's get this chicken patty started, shall we? These chicken patties, before I uh, actually throw them on the grill, I just used chicken with some sesame seeds, some soy sauce, and then also some wasabi powder and salt and pepper. We're gonna cook the chicken patties in a little bit of sesame oil and a little bit of peanut oil just to give it that, mm, that super umami flavor. So we're gonna put a little bit of oil down in the pan and we're gonna be doing a little bit of sesame oil down on the pan too. All right, while we let this thing heat up, let's talk about some benefits of some things, shall we? First off, do you guys know anything about nori? Some people know that nori has some amazing health benefits in terms of their thyroid because it has iodine in it. It actually has a pretty decent amount of iodine, but here, let me dispel some things for you. So here's the thing, you can't fix a thyroid problem with iodine, that's not how it works. Thyroids function with iodine, it actually incorporates it into the T molecule for it to become active. If you have a deficiency in iodine, yeah, you need it. If you don't have a deficiency in iodine, 
Iodine is not gonna help your thyroid function any better. In fact, if you take too much iodine, it can actually cause things to be worse. This smells like it's burning. I say all of that to say this. Sushi is amazing, nori is amazing. A bunch of vitamins in general, B, C, D, it's got a bunch of B12 in it. I love it a lot, but here's the thing, can't fix thyroid if you don't have enough or just with iodine. So be careful with your iodine. I'm gonna throw these chicken patties on this nice hot grill and get them cooking and then we're gonna put everything else together. All right guys, we got all four of these chicken patties cooking on the grill. I love chicken, ground chicken. I think it's really superior to be honest. Don't hate me for saying that, but turkey is fattier than they say it is and it tastes like nothing, so there's that. And then beef is so fatty, it has a lot of deliciousness, but I try not to eat a lot of red meat. So um, anyway, we're left with chicken. And uh, I think that it's a perfect medium for really any flavor you want to do. And you know, teriyaki chicken is amazing. So these are my little rice patties that I made. Um, I made them before and then I kind of put them in the fridge. And I think they're in a really good shape for buns. <laughs> Gluten-free buns, which, you know, honestly, easiest gluten-free buns I've ever made. I'm getting used to this induction stove, I'll tell you that much. It was terrifying at first. I'm gonna put together a little Tsunomono salad dressing. So I love Tsunomono salads. They're at the Japanese restaurants. They're usually cut up cucumbers. They can be long ways or they can be julienned. I love julienne because anything you get close to a noodle, I love. I julienned some delicious English cucumbers. And English cucumbers are my favorite. I don't know what kind of cucumbers you guys like, but English for me, oh, it has the best ratio of skin to flesh without the seeds because Seeds are kind of gross and watery and nobody wants that in their food. So English cucumbers, it's the way to go. By the way, if you don't know what English cucumber is, it looks like this. It's the long skinny ones that are wrapped in plastic. So I made a delicious looking Tsunomoto cucumber magic and we're gonna put together the dressing. Additionally, Tsunomoto dressing has a vinegar, maybe an oil, a little bit of soy sauce and a sugar and sometimes they throw in some toasted sesames. I love to use rice wine vinegar, but I ran out, so we're gonna use regular white vinegar, a little tiny uh, half of a teaspoon of sesame oil. That's what really gives it that mm, flavor. And then we're also gonna use some cocoa aminos. Don't worry, I have more. This stuff is amazing. If you don't know about cocoa aminos, try cocoa aminos out. It's it's coconut aminos, let me be clear. Uh, a lot less sodium, also it's gluten-free and it's got this sweet flavor like uh, teriyaki sauce. Try it out if you haven't, you'll be addicted, I promise you. This is the tiniest bowl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple teaspoons of vinegar and then we're gonna do about a teaspoon of amino acids, half teaspoon of sesame oil, and a little bit of toasted sesame seeds on the cucumbers. And we whisk that up. All right, we have adhered our nori together, so now we have a very long sheet, which I think will be pretty great. And now we're gonna take our rice patties and we're gonna plop it right on there. One rice patty going on. Awesome. So I think what I'm gonna try to do, because I've never done this before, is put it on one side and then fold it over and we'll see how well that goes. Okay, here we go. This is arguably the most complicated part where we're putting the patties together. So we're gonna put our chicken patty on the rice patty here, and then we're gonna be starting to layer things. So I've got some delicious cucumber pickles. We're gonna be laying that over the top. We're also going to be putting some pickled ginger over the top of that, some jalapeno peppers over the top of that. Uh, I love my spicy. You can use as much jalapeno as you want. So I'm gonna go a little wild. Some green onions on the top of that, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of horseradish mustard on it because it's <sighs> more spice the better. And I just went everywhere. Sweet, love that for me. That's cool. 
Uh, I'll deal with that later. And then we're gonna put a little bit of the sesame ginger from Foddy, Foodie, Foodie Foods, Foodie Fob, Bob Foodies deliciousness. We're gonna put that right over the top of it. A little bit will do ya. We're going ham on sesame for this one. Sesame's amazing for ya. Really good oil as well. It just tastes pretty amazing. So, and then we're gonna be sprinkling some black sesame seeds over the top of it. Yum. Let it make sure it gets it everywhere. It's part of it. And put the top on it and see how well this goes. Uh, this might be an utter disaster. Uh, here we go. Oh, it's already broken. Awesome. Huh. We'll fold it over that way. Fold it over this way. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use a little bit of water. That water. Oh, it's falling apart. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. We're gonna fold up one end and don't look at the sides. And we're gonna we're gonna wrap it like a present. Yeah. Presents. I'm a master wrapper. Oh my god, it's falling apart. <laughs> All right, this is uh, this is exciting. It's like water acts as the tape. Oh shit, not This is really bad. You know, I never thought working at Taco Bell would be so incredibly helpful at this moment. Wrapping a burrito on one side and just trying darndest not to ruin it. You know, there's probably a reason why this isn't made right now, and I'm, I'm kind of proving it. Okay, okay, okay. We have somewhat of a square. Um, I didn't think this through. I have no idea how to hold it. I need parchment paper is what I need. The good news is that it's softened to a point where it's kind of necessary, but let's try this. Let's get this in, in here. Good, perfect. Yeah. I wanna <laughs> flop it on there. And then we wrap it up like deli paper. And then what we're gonna do This is what we made! <laughs> There's mustard everywhere. Mmm, I think it's good mustard. All right, peeps. There you go. Let's uh, cut this in half. So we finished it. Uh, it was it, it, the, less of a disaster than I really expected it to be. Let's get my husband in here and have him try it. See what he thinks. What we got? Oh my god. Um, less of a disaster than previous. So that's oh, well, great. That's improvement. I, well, thanks. Here you go. We'll do it that it way. It breaks into four. That's pretty cool. I mean, breaks, yeah. I cut it into four. I also made a Sunamono salad. Do you know what a Sunamono salad is? Nope, never even heard that term. Fair enough. It's cucumber salad. You can get it at sushi restaurants. Um, cucumber basically. salad, I've heard of. Let's try this out. Oh. Okay. And then we'll try that out. Cheers, my dear. Cheers. Oh, God. It looks good. Oh, a mouthful. <laughs> Pickle down. Oh, my God. That's pretty good. Wow. It tastes like onigiri. It's sort of sushi like. The way it's constructed makes it more burrito-esque, almost. It, it reminds me more of a burrito than sushi. What do you mean is right? What, there's, what, wait, rewind. What do you mean it tastes more like a burrito than a sushi? Well, because it's, it's carved. There's nothing okay. Mexican about this. In any there's room. nothing Mexican about it. But like, like it's texture. So you've got, you've got like your outside skin. And then like inside you've got like the rice. And it's like between the, the seaweed and the rice, it somehow comes across almost like like a burrito filling, like with the rice that's in like a burrito. <laughs> I just imagine this would be like either an onigiri or it'd be like a, a really giant sushi roll if mm -hmm. you had to like really, you know, unhinge your jaw to be able to eat the sushi roll. Let's try the cinnamon salad. Well, I can't want to keep eating it. You can keep eating it off camera. <laughs> okay. Here, try it. Okay. Oh my God, we made a huge mess down here. Oh, down. Oh, whatever, that's rice down. I used to work in a Japanese uh, restaurant who was, uh, it was part Japanese, part American, and the also the- uh, uh, Tempanyaki. Yeah. yeah, part Tempanyaki restaurant. And um, I used to love these, these were so good. They were so expensive. They were like four or five bucks. Did that just blow your mind? <laughs> Isn't it good? 
Hell yeah, let's see how good it is. That, I haven't tried it. That's unbelievable. That's like, like <laughs> soy saucy. That's like sushi, like everything good about sushi all wrapped into one because it's, it's green and it's fresh. So it's got like that fresh sushi taste, mm. but it's also got like, it, but it's bright and vibrant, but it's also got like the, but the, the it's the, the, the sesame seeds on top, the toasted sesame seeds. I, well, I love the addition of the cocoa aminos rather than just putting straight sugar on it. So mm. this is bomb. That's what makes it sweet. Yeah, mm. yeah. Normally you'd put sugar in it, but I love co cocoa aminos, so that's delicious. Okay. It's, it's yeah. Do you guys want to try it? Oh yeah. This is my friend Ken. He helped me film this today. He's gonna try out this as well. Daniel doesn't want to be on camera, so you know, respect that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, what? Mm. Oh, oh, is it good? Uh, I think this would be better if I would have made the rice today rather than the rice being made a couple days ago. It's too soft. It would be very oh. soft. It was it's already just, a disaster. Yeah, like it's barely holding <laughs> shape. As it is. As it is. Like, I know. It would have just been like, yeah. What do you think, Daniel? Haven't heard anything Flavor's from you. Flavor's got the sauce, the sauce is delicious. He's like, I can swallow first. What do you think? I love that. That's good. You I like guess. that? Yeah. I mean, well, um, well chosen. Really oh, easy, really simple. I'd yeah. say it's flavorful. It's uh, like tender it. throughout, and you, you don't even really notice the rice. You don't really notice the rice. What do you mean? I mean, it has such. It's not. It's not. The rice isn't overwhelming. Mm. Yeah. Oh, because it's been yeah, because it's been flavored. Yeah. I highly recommend you guys try some version of this. Maybe not this one, but you know, a version which more sauce. You want more sauce in this sauce with sauciness? Because I love sauce. Next video is going to be a gluten-free souffle pancake. I'm gonna attempt to do it. I haven't seen other people be successful, so I can't imagine that I'm gonna be the rock star in it. But we can try. Let's see. Let's make a little FODMAP. Let's make it this, make it that. Why not? Anyway, thanks for watching. Like this video. If you like this video, give me, give me a good old thumbs up because it was a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!